Somera Mudiruryo nge wagidua Maryland High School elisangi kwentebe Somero lia bawala na balenzi Duso Mesa Arts and Sciences Okuvile dela kusini ya soka Okutuki dela kusini ya yomukaga Ngali sangi mamu chifechi wewe pobulunje Tuline bisule vyo mulembe Science Laboratory Stakone Computer Lab Uwamune She gives you her number But your pen didn't work And the bus is gone Get a pen you can rely on. Big Crystal, the long-lasting pen with perfect ink flow. Wamune. Green Hill Academy has high standards of learning and the teachers are very good. They give you a sense of belonging. Green Hill has helped me to discover my talent. The environment is good. Encourage us children to be excellent. Tere vole kubibia sterefa ine yafe, yo waka waka propaganda, esawa wa ziweze nya. Mkujo kizante, unako rautu ina program ya fegiana kutambula anga bolijo, na ye kurunako orencha, kusawa wali omuenda nekumi, tuja kubatu inao emisa, na boi chito tuja, ke, tuja kusembeze eno, maso eno, ya tuja kusembeza ate kilasi e, ya bana, abasini ya e, yomu kaga, ningera bagena kubanga na bobo basoma, wadembele eno uweli. Mbele ya tuja kubatu jikubelela, na dala nga tuwa kala ukulaba na tuofuna, ate vigenda maso mwiche eno, mwuzikidiza ye dini, na ya te ilanga nukusomo sigade osoma. Uh, kusawa eno tugenda mkubala. Msumisa ya tuseda, ava mengo eses. Njaka kapa televu mkwasi kilasi. Ata gende maso, no tutusako. Nenga tawela bide, niti abataka musente. Bebana pa wa Maryland High School. Atela kosa ne Green Hill Schools. Ebu wate ne Chibuli. Atela mngeri emu, bana pa wangumba University. Ne Bik, e, yo peni. E, Singadolo kubela peni nunji. Omana joino kubango kwa. Yama nyinti mabali mkubala kati yao. Pokubala ebi nitu pitambula budu nunji. Oja kubango ino kubango kwa isa peni ya, yo, e, ya Bik. Master. Mabutelevu abana about today, bali ndiegwe watuwa ale mkilasi. Yes, thank you very much. So I welcome you all, the viewers and my lovely students. So we are going to continue with the mathematics. And, and last time we had begun on functions. So I know you already with your big pens. So you see we are going to move on with the same topic. And if time allows, I want us to complete this today. The next week... We can start on a new topic. We can do some another new topic. And so after this, I'll give you suggestions. I'll give you a chance to suggest on what we can, we can cover next. You can choose a topic on, of your own interest. I'll be seeing the topics that you, you want, then we can cover that. So we are going to continue with the functions. And last time, I, I continue to thank those that, that, that gave us the feedback. We had a lot of feedback. Some were answering the question that we are left behind. So please, we thank you for that. So some answer the questions, and even we have some few issues that we are raised, we are going to address them here. Uh, some people are asking about the composite functions, but we are going to see them. Some people are asking about the inverse, we have already covered that, but we are going to do more questions concerning the inverse, as you'll be seeing here. So make sure that you try to understand the concept. And some people still were, were asking me which tips can I give them so that they can pass the mathematics. But I encourage you, please, that continue. Continue to understand the concept. So don't, don't cram anything here, because in mathematics, we can teach something, and I can give you a question, and I can just modify in the setting, maybe in the exam, I can modify the question. So I encourage you that understand the concept, and again, you keep on practicing. You practice. You know, mathematics requires you to practice every time. So the more you practice, the more you become perfect. So I'm going to start with the word of prayer today, then we continue. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the life you have given us. We thank you for everything. We thank you even for this moment as we're going to have our lesson today. Continue to guide us. Let your spirit guide me as I teach them. And also, the Holy spirit should guide them as they learn. That everything that you are going to study, they do understand. We implore that believing and trusting in Jesus Christ, mighty name. Amen. So let us go to the functions. And last time we stopped on, we had covered how we can solve the functions, how we can do the substitutions. We looked at numbers where they can give you a function in maybe f of x. Maybe this is equals to 2x plus 5. And, and we covered how we, can, how, how we can maybe get f of 2. We, we saw that. Also, we covered how we can, they can maybe remove 2. They put for us any constant. 
They can remove five, they put first a constant, or B, or any unknown, and we cover that, we, we can get that. So today we are going to continue. If I'm going to first look at some few questions still concerning the inverse, then we go ahead and look at the composite functions. And that will be marking the end of the functions. I, I just pray that we complete today. Uh, next time we'll look at another, another topic. So we had our questions, and some members tried the questions. So Sue, I, I thank you so much, and I, I gave you also feedback. I was telling you some of, some of you had mistakes, and some who had passed the questions, so I was, I was thanking you for doing that. So let us continue with those questions that we were doing last time. And I think we had gone even number six, we already finished. So we are going to go to number seven. We are going to go to number seven. And, and we look at those questions still concerning the, concerning the inverse. So we are going to look at number seven, we have this. Those questions, they are going to project, they're going to project them for you. And now we have modified. So some of you are still raising some concerns that you are trying out the numbers. I don't know what the answers are. So we have tried, me and my team and the producers and everyone, we have seen that we also put for you the answers. So the questions that we leave behind and you have not been able to do them, and we say maybe you try them in your free time, you try out and you can mark yourself because now the answers are going to be there. We are putting for you the answers. So after trying out, please go ahead and check with the answers and see if the answer we have here is the same as the same ones that you have also got. Because some of you are, you are very concerned that you don't have teachers there to mark and you don't have friends around in the neighborhood, but we have organized that the answers are also there. So we are looking at our next question. They are telling us to find, they are giving us g of x equals to 5x minus 10. They are telling us to find the inverse. They are telling us the inverse of g and they are giving us a 1. So we are going to, to work out this. The last time I left when I told you how to get the inverse, we said we have very many ways of getting the inverse, but so I try, as I'm teaching here, I try to give you the simplest way of doing it. For example, I can give you, I, normally I, when I'm teaching this, I can give you more than enough ways. I can give more than two or three met methods. But so I encourage you that you choose the easiest method. So this time I opted, I gave you the easiest that you can use when you are finding the, the inverse. And most times we teach this and we give you out of swapping, swap this. But some students too, they end up making out of mistakes. That's why I just use the other method of making x the subject. So we are having this. They're asking us to find the inverse of g of, of 1. So what you first do, you first find the inverse of g of x. So we are going to do it like this. You are going to first come back where there is g of x. You are going to put there y. We are going to put there y, so we are going to put y here, we say y equals 5x. We said you can use any other noun, not only that y is going, to, is going to be used every time. So we have y equals f of x minus 10. Now we said the, the easiest way of doing this, you can make x the subject. So we come here, we make x the subject. So another way that you can, we are swapping y with g of x. And sometimes you can also teach that still you swap y with x, then again you make, you make y the subject. See, so it is very okay. You still get the answer. But you have seen that sometimes when you tell students to swap y with x, and again make, make, make the y the subject, sometimes you find that they are making mistakes. But here, what we are saying that after getting y equals fx minus 10, come and make x the subject. So you are going to bring 10 this side, so I'll be having my y. Now when this one jumps the equal sign, it becomes a positive. So I'll be having y plus 10, this will be equal to 5x, like that. So see so what we do here, we are going to divide by 5 on both sides. So I'll divide here by 5, i also divide here by 5. So I end up having my x as y plus 10 divided by 5. That's my x now. I have x equals to y plus 10 divided by 5. And we said you come back now. Where there is x, we are going to, this is going to become now the inverse. And now where there is y, we are going to replace it with x. So we are going to come back and start. Our inverse now, g, the inverse of x, g of x here, is going to be equal to x plus 10 then you divide by 5. So this is our inverse of g of x. 
And after getting, so when they give you, sometimes they won't say, well, sometimes this, the question becomes very easy. When they give you stepwise, they say find the inverse of gx, it becomes a little bit very easy. They say find, when they're giving the inverse of g, they're giving you one. It becomes very easy. But now in this case, they're not asking us to find the inverse of g of x. But so, since we have the inverse, we first find this. Now what we do now, we are going to come back and substitute this because they're giving us, they're having a one here. So also you come back in the function of g of x, where there is x now, we are going to put there one. Since we have x here and we have a one, it means that our x now is one. So you come in this function still where you have been having a x, we put there one, so I'll be having 11. This will be one plus 10, then divide by five. And our g inverse of one becomes 11 out of five. So this becomes the answer. So still you can press and give it in decimals. There is no problem. So but the perfect, perfect one is there. When you have infections, the fraction, they can't doubt your actually. So this is our answer is 11 out of 5. And as you see there, the question, we have organized them that we are giving you the answers now. So as you copy the questions, the answers are with you. Even if you are alone, you try out, you follow the steps that we have done here, then still you can mark yourself. You can see if you have got the answer right. If you don't get the answer, still you try. So if you look at our answer, still it was 11 out of 5. That is what you have got exactly here. Now again, we are having a number 8. So please copy those questions. We will be trying them out. So, and uh, they will be addressing very many concepts. I so said that we are doing them in order. As we are following them, they are, they are, they are going on. They are, the way they are moving on, they are addressing different concepts. We are moving on from one concept to the other. If you have been following from the other previous lesson of last week, we are moving from one concept to the other, one concept to the other. So we have another question. In this case, they are giving us the inverse. I think that question number eight, are telling us that the inverse of f of x is x plus 10 divided by five. The inverse of f of x is x plus 10 divided by five. Then asking me to find f of phili. They are saying find f of phili. So if you are seeing this one still, it is the same question. I just said it to be, it's the same question you have just done in number seven. Number seven, they are giving us the function. But now in number eight, we are starting from the inverse. Previously, we are getting the inverse, but now we are starting from the inverse, then we have to go back and first get the functions. So I made them to be related that you can easily compare and see. You appreciate that there's something, there's some relationship here. Other than if I had brought a different question, which is not similar to this, you would have, they, they would seem not to be similar, there would seem to be no relationship at all, but there is a very, very good relationship if you look at the two. So we are going to look at this. So we, we said at this time, even I tried for you one number that we can go back and get the function. So when, when we are given this inverse now, we are going to do the same thing and get the function. And so that the function, we get it in the same way as we have got the inverse. We give, use the almost the same, the, the same concept. As you move to the inverse, the same way you move, as you move from the inverse to go back to the function. So, so we are going to, 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 to just come back here. We swap where there is the inverse of f of x, we are going to make it to be y or any other function that you can use. So if I make this one to be y, I'll be having y will be equal to x plus 10 divided by 5, like that. Now, so what I do, I'm going to look at the same thing that I did here. I will make still my x the subject. So we're going to multiply by 5 on both sides, by 5 here, by 5 on this side. Or even if you divide by 1, then you cross multiply, it is very fine. So I multiply by 5 on this side. And I also multiply by 5 on this side. So I'll be having 5y. This will be equal to this 5 and the 5 they will cancel. So I'll be having 5y will be equal to x plus 10. We go to x plus 10. Since my interest is in making x the subject, so still I'm going to I'm going to take 10 this side. And when 10 jumps the equal sign, it is going to become a negative. So if it jumps that side, it's going to become a negative. So I'll be having, I'll be having my x, my x 
will be equal to 5y minus 10. 5y minus 10. Now, so what we do, we come back and, and swap. Well, we have been having the x here is going to become the function. We have been having the y is going to become now our x. So I'll be having f of x is going to be equal to 5x minus 10. So this is almost the other question that we are dealing with in number 7. Just because previous you have been starting from the function, now we are starting from the inverse. And after getting the f of x, because they had given us the inverse, but they want us to get f of e. So since after, you do it after getting the f of x. So after having f of x now, you can just come back and get our f of e here. It's just going to be got by substitution. I'll get my 5. So it means that where there is x, I'll put a 5. Uh, where there is x, I'll put a 5. So I'll be having 5 times e then minus 10. And this will give me 15. Of course, I get 15 here minus 10. So I get my f of phili as 5. So that becomes the answer there. My f of phili becomes 5. And please present all the working. Your working has to be systematic like you are seeing here. Present the working properly. And some of us have a tendency of jumping some steps. But the way we mark is that we, we don't just mark the final answer. We score depending on how you are doing. We have a method mark. We have the bonus mark. We have the address mark. So please present all the steps. You don't use anything by, by presenting all the steps. Otherwise, you, you miss out sometimes if you jump the steps. So present everything, be organized, and everything will be right. So that's how we do this number here. That's how we do it. Now, we are going to have more questions of the same, or still requiring us to, have the, to work out with the inverse. So the concept is knowing how to get the, that's what we are looking at now, knowing how to get the inverse of a function. And still we can, after knowing how to get the inverse, we can still go back and get the function. So in the cases where you are given the inverse, please, I expect you now to be able to go back and get the function. So we are going to look at another number. That's number nine. So number nine still they are giving us they are giving us f of x. Uh, I want so, also to give you some numbers that you, you will try out. So num number nine, they are giving us f of x. So we can do this. Then uh, I think after we'll be trying to go to the composites. Because most people have had some questions there. So they are giving us number nine. And we are having our f of x is it given by x squared. So you have that question there. 9 is f of x is given x squared minus 17. And also we have g of x is given by x plus phili. They're telling us to solve the equation for which the inverse of f of x equals the inverse of g of x. So you want us to solve this equation here. You want us to solve this equation. For which the inverse of f of x equals the inverse of g of x. So the concept that you have always seen was getting the inverse. Now we can see that we can do very many questions that come after that. Because still here, what you are going to do, you are going to first get the inverse of g of x. So we get the inverse of f of x. And after getting them, we are going to equate them. Like the way the equation is given here. We are going to equate them. Then we end up getting, our, we end up getting the equation in terms of x, then we solve the equation that we are going to obtain. And so that here we have very many ways of getting the inverse. It's like, you know, mathematics is not something that you have to, that's why I said don't cram anything, understand. So if you understand this, you can do it in very many ways, but still the answers will be the same. The answers will be the same. It's like when you are, some of us, if you have rats at home, you can kill a rat in very many ways, very many ways, maybe I beat a mosquito. You can do it in very many ways. So if I, I find a lot, I can choose to, to use a trap. Sometimes you can use a trap. You can use poison and you, the rat will die if it eats the poison. Leave alone these this, this, this rats now of Kampala. For them, some of them even, they, they, they can earn trap. You set a trap and they, you find that it has now, it's now setting the same trap to you who was setting it before. But you can use very many ways. Other person may decide to just chase the rat and 
You find maybe you are using a, a stick, you are using a broom, and still you beat it and it dies. Another person can use a gun, you can use a panga, but at the end you are going to kill the rat. So what happens here, to be, you, use, you have very many concepts that we can use, you have very many approaches in mathematics. That's why, that's why it is a very lively sub subject, and, and it has a lot of ways of approaching it. There are very many ways. So, but still, the answers will be the same. So we are going to look at this one. We're going to get the inverse of f of x. We get the inverse of g of x. After that, we put them, inside, we put them in the question given. We solve what they want. Let us do now. We are going to find the inverse of f of x. So see, we are going to work out like before. I can come here where there is f of x. I'm going to replace it with some other unknown, can be y, can be p, can be anything, provided you understand what to do. So I can make it to be maybe p. I can say it p. p now is, is I'm swapping p with f of x. Or even you can say let p equal to f of x. There's no problem. So if p equals x squared minus 17, like that, so still we can make our x the subject. So you bring 17 this side, and it will become a positive because it is jumping the equal sign, it's crossing the equal sign. I, even if you say plus 17, plus 17, it's very okay. So I'll be having p plus 17, this will be equal to x squared. Now what I do now, see where I swap where there is, after I, I, I have x squared here, so we are going to, to remove the x squared, since we want only to have x. Now, since we're having x squared, to remove the square, to remove the square, we have to get the square root. Because some people, they now to get the inverse. But still, find someone is getting a challenge here. And last time we talked about this, that x squared, if you want to bring a square root, you multiply by, from indices, if you multiply the power, you can put a power here that will cancel out the two. And that power will be, in this case, it will be a half. Because if I have x squared, let's look at this. In this case, we have x squared equals to p plus 17. So if I, I, I want to remove the x squared, I'm going, to power, I'm going to multiply by a half here as my power. Also, I power everything here by a half. But a half is the same as the square root. So I can get a square root on both sides here and also this side. And this, last time I was, I was explaining something, I was saying that most times, students so introducing a square root here, they are going to introduce on individual numbers, which is not right. We said when you have like p plus 17, what I have here, and I want to introduce anything, ever logarithm, ever I'm going to introduce a power, I'm going to introduce a square root sign, ever a cube root sign, anything that we're introducing, consider it to be one number. This one is, go is going to be one term. Don't introduce on individual numbers. You have been seeing that in very many cases. You find somebody knows what to do, but again is messing up on something that's very, very small. So please, if you're introducing anything here, introduce and take this one to be one entity, that when you are moving it again, you go back to what you had before. I was making emphasis on that last time. So we are going to get the square root on both sides. So I'll get square root on this side. Also get square root on this side. So I'll be having square root of x squared, x squared, these two cancel out the square root. It's like two and a half, they cancel out. So I'll be having my x. This will be equal to square root of p plus 17. I'll be having that. Now, so we go back and we, we replace now. We have, we have been having x. We are going to have the inverse of f of x. It's going to be equal to that. Where well, we have been having a p, I'm going to put there an x. So I'll be having, it's because of the square root of x plus 17. That's my inverse of f of x. Now, so I go out and work out the inverse of g of x. So I can start, since my gx is given to me, my gx is given to me as x plus three like that. So if I come back here, I can sell it my, maybe I can use n equal to x plus three. Now still making x the subject, I end up having my n minus three. I have my x will be equal to n minus three. So it implies that my inverse in this case is going to be, I just come back here, so I'll have my inverse of g of x, and this will be equal to x minus, minus f3 here. This is my inverse of g of x. Now, having both the inverse, uh, inverses of g of x, and also I have that of f of x, 
we are going to go back and follow what was given in the question. So the question is just telling us to solve the equation that you obtain after equating the inverse of f of x, the inverse of g of x. Now, since I've got all the two, I've got the inverse for f of x, for g of x, I'm going to equate them following the question that's given to me. So they keep on modifying, but what you want to understand here is how to get the inverse, and now we move from the inverse to go back to the function. If you know that, then another question they will be setting for you concerning the inverse, if they, you modify, we change anything, you can be able to answer it. So we are going to go back and look at our equation given to us here, where we have the equal sign. So I'm going to come back and just put the inverse. Since we have, we have the inverse now, we have the inverse of gx, I'm going to put them there. Then after putting them there, I will solve the equation that I'm going to obtain. So for me as I'm doing this, so we are going to come back here. So they bring a question like this and they put in section B and find they're giving it some good marks, but it's only about the concept of the inverse. So my inverse of f of x was square root of x plus 17. And again, my inverse of g of x was x minus was x minus, or is x minus 3. So what I do here is that I have to solve the equation. Now they are asking you to solve for x. Now we look at this number is that in this case, it has gone beyond functions. Now we are no longer looking at functions. We are looking at how we can solve equation. equation. And most times, it may even end up into quadratic. That's what most times you end up into, quadratic equations. You find they're setting a number like this, giving it 12 marks, or they're giving it six marks. In fact, if you know how to do it, you, you will enjoy how you're doing these numbers. Only the inverse, that's the only concept, then it ends up in quadratic, so they're testing, can you solve the quadratic equation? So if you look at this x is that, we're having x minus three, and also we have square root of x plus 17. Now to solve this equation, you cannot solve anything because this is x minus three. There's no way you can, you're going to bring x this side or three this side. You first have to move the square root. You first have to deal with the square root here. And now we do that. How do we do that? We're just going to square both sides. Because the square root is like power half. So to remove the half, then we square. We saw previously that removing the squared, we, we introduced the square root. Now again, removing the square root, we square. We do the reverse. So we are going to square both sides. And again, when you're squaring, please consider this to be one entity, one term. Don't square individual numbers, x alone, three alone. That's not right. I'm saying it's a very common mistake. It's a very common mistake made when you're doing a number like this. Very many students are going to work out. They know to get the inverse. They get the inverse of f of x, inverse of, inverse of g of x. But now here, some are going to be left here. You're going to find a big person that is going to be left here. They can't move on. So please, number like this, we square both sides. So I'm going to square this side where I have root of x plus 17. I square this side. And also I come and square this as the whole entity. I consider it to be one. I square this one also, like that. Then as I square this one, when you square this one, the square is going to cancel out with the two. Square root and the two, this is like power half times the two, you get a one. So I end up having x plus 17 here. And again, this side, still some of us have problems on expanding this. So expanding this one, there are some identities normally give you, we give you in class. So that, or if you can't use the identities given in class, well, some of us, you may not be able to recall them, but you see this one is the same as having x minus three into x minus three like that. Also, we have covered an identity that when you have a plus b, let's look at this, because sometimes it makes work easy. A plus b squared is the same as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. We can still use this one. So if you have a plus b squared, it's the same as this. So in this case, if you have a minus b, we still will be having a minus b squared. This one becomes a negative. So it will be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So still we can use this identity. It is very fine, and sometimes it makes work a little bit easy. But again, if you can't use this, you can go back and open brackets as normal as, as, as normal as we do it. So there's no problem here. So please, if you don't get the identity, it's okay. You can open the brackets. Still, it is very fine. So I'll be having my x plus 17 
this will be equal to x squared. Since we have x times x, we get x squared. And x times negative 3, I get minus or negative 3x. Then negative 3 times this, so I'll be having times x, I get negative 3x. The negative 3 times negative 3, you get plus 9. So, so you come back and collect like a terms. See how the question required a lot of stuff now? So this is a very good question. So now we are going to just collect like a terms. So I have x plus 17 this side. Then this is equal to x squared minus. Now when you have negative 3x and negative 3x, it's going to give us negative 6x, then plus 9. Now, the moment you have x squared, you have x, you have some other values without anything, the constants. That means you are going to have a quadratic equation. So what we do, we try to collect like a terms. I can bring this one, this side, that I have a 0 on the other side. Quadratic equation becomes very easy to solve. If you have a 0, always make sure that you have a 0 on one side. So you bring this one, this other side. And now when they cross and they, these two terms, all these two numbers, x and 17, when they come this side, they will, will change the sign. What has been, they have been positive, they are going to become negatives. So I'm, I'm going to say that this is 0, will be equal to now I have x squared minus. So where I've been having, I've been having minus 6x. Six, I want to, here I'm doing very much, all of us can understand this. I have minus 6x. Six, six. The x comes this side, becomes a negative, I have minus x, then plus 9, which was there, and then minus the 17, minus the 17. So this will give us negative 6x and negative x, we'll be getting negative 7x, 9 minus the 17, we can also subtract this, we get negative 8. So I end up having my quadratic equation, which is x squared minus 7x, then minus 8, this will be equal to 0. Now, this is a quadratic equation. So I'm going to solve this quadratic equation. As you are seeing it, you are going to solve it. So we have very many methods of solving quadratic equations. We, we, have, we have the factorization method. I'm going to use that. We have the complete squares. We have the quadratic formula or the bulldozer. So we have even the curve. So use the easiest method here, and you solve the equation. And that's why I encourage us that we have, we have calculators. We have calculators. You don't have please buy one because we need to have those equipments if you are doing mathematics. You find some, because now a number like this, I always encourage that if you work out this question in using any method of your own choice, we have a factorization, as yes, we're going to use factorization here, go ahead and, go ahead and use the calc to prove the, to prove the answers because you can solve this using your calculator. So go ahead and prove it using the calculator so that the answers you have got are correct. Because this is very bad. You make a simple mistake on factorizing this, and yet you end up missing marks. Yet you have the calic, which is made to make work easy. The, the calculator has to simplify your work. So please, after solving this, go on, go on the calculator. You place mode until when you find equation. Now, when you place the equation, they'll, give, they'll bring for you. First, we have, they bring you two unknowns or three unknowns. You still place on the other arrow on your right. They'll bring, you, they'll bring you degree 2 or degree 3. So in this case, you have degree 2, you use that. So you place on your A is 1, B is negative 7, C is negative 8. As you keep on placing the equal signs, you get the answers. But here, you here work out and tell us, the, get the answers. You just use the calculator to prove and see your answers, whether they are OK or they are not OK. So we come back here. You are going to use now factorization. So now this is a quadratic equation now. It's not function that is a quadratic equation. So what we see here, we get two numbers. When you multiply them, they're going to give us negative 8. And when we add them, we get negative 7. Look at these coefficients here. When you multiply them, you get negative 8. When you, we add them, you're going to get negative 7. And those numbers, you get them using this. You get the factors. The easiest way of getting numbers, use the factors of, this, uh, of the product. Because our product is supposed to be negative 8. And look at the factors of 8. Look at the two which can differ by, by one. Because now, in this case, you're having negative 7. You can see where you add them, you can get se negative 7. You can get something like 7. And look at the factors of 8. We have 1 and 8. We have 2 and 4. If you look at 2 and 4, they, they, they will give us a 6. If you add, if you subtract, they will give us a, a 2. But if you look at this one here, 1 and 8, the, the, you can get a 7 here. 
you can get a 7. So that means that this one will not help us 2 and 4, but 1 and 8 can help us. So we are going to look at 1 and 8. We see what to modify. We are saying when you multiply, you get negative 8. When you add, you get negative 7. So to get some of negative 7 means that the 8 has to be bigger than the 1 in terms of negative. So negative, so this will be negative 8, this will be positive 1. When I multiply, I get negative 8. When I add the 2, I get negative 7. So you bring them back here. I'm saying it's now a quadratic equation. I bring it back here now where there is negative 7x, I'll put these two. But I, I, I put x on them. I'll say minus 8x plus 1, which is now x. Then minus 8, this will be equal to 0. So what we do now, we take two, two terms. Because now this, is, this has gone out factorization. When I take x squared minus 8x, you see what's common. x is common. So I can put x out. I have x minus 8 remaining here. What I have in brackets, I will still bring the same thing this side. So I also have here x minus 8. You see we have equals to 0. And I ask myself, what do I, what do I multiply? in this to go back and get x minus 8. And if you look at this x minus 8, so you have x minus 8, that means it will be a 1. So if I put here a positive 1, it will take me back to this. So you factorize out still x minus 8 is common. So I'll be having x minus 8, this one here, x minus 8. In two brackets, I have x plus 1. In this case, now we are doing quadratic equations. So now we come here, we have x minus 8 into x plus 1. So now if you want to get the values of x, you equate this to 0. Even this will be equal to 0. Then we get the individual values or the two values of x. We get two values of x because our degree was degree 2. That means to give us two values of x. If you had degree 3, so you would be getting three values of x. So we are going to equate each of them to 0. So x minus 8, either x minus 8, equals to 0. Also, you can have x plus 1 equals to 0. So we take this one, 8 this side, I get, it becomes a positive. I will get my x equals 0 plus 8, which will give me 8. And also, I can get my x, this one comes this side, becomes a negative. So I have 0 minus 1, which will give me negative 1. So my values for this, they will be x equals to 8 or x equals to negative one. So those become the answers here. So x equals to 8. We can also have x equals to negative 1. So those are the values of x. And that was the solution for that number. So these numbers, aside from the concept, was just to find the inverse. But now we ended up having a quadratic equation, and that's how we work it out. It has been some good number, and some numbers like this, you'll find them in section B. And if you know what to do, really, you enjoy the number. You enjoy a number like this, and you move out when you are very happy knowing that you have got some good marks. So this is how we do the number. I'll be giving you more numbers to try out on your own, to try out on your own. There's some numbers I will not do, but I will leave them with you to try out. So we are going to, that's how we do it. So the other thing, the remaining part was only to, to work out the quadratic equation, to now to square, how to move the square root, then Make sure that you take time that you don't, uh, don't, fail, don't fail to do the algebra there, collecting like a terms and so on. Make sure you take your time. So we are going to go to some other number. So this is how we do it. So please, when your free time, you can try it out and see. So it's a good thing the answers, we have them. See so your answers, you can see that there were 8 and negative 1. That's what we have also got here. Now, sometimes they can give us rational functions. We have the rational functions, which are functions which are in terms of fractions, like we are going to see some. And they can ask you to find the values of x. I also want to bring out this because it is also something that we, we, we find very common in numbers. Uh, and that's what we have in our next number, number 10. They're telling us that a function is given by x plus 5. They're giving us a function by x plus 5 out of x squared minus 25. This is our function. And they are saying that find the values of x for which the function is meaningless. They, are, they can use very many words still to mean meaningless. They can say for which the function doesn't exist, for which the function is not valid, 
for which the function is invalid. We can use very many words. I also want us to talk about this. This is something that is very easy, that all of us who are watching to, to, to this morning here today, we don't fail a number like this if we find it in exams. So what we do here, they are giving us a rational function that we have x plus 5 out of x squared minus 25. I want us to find the values of x, or the values of x that this function will be meaningless. This function will not exist. This function will be invalid. This function will not be valid. They can bring a number like that. So what we do here is that there's a simple concept that we follow. Well, that you, you'll be seeing it as we move on. Some of the things, don't talk about them here. But as we move on, we'll be seeing them. Even up to A level, we'll be seeing this. I'm sure you understand this because you'll be seeing it. Again, I think we apply it in inequalities and you, you'll be seeing the concept. So what we do is that we have this x squared minus 25. For this function to be meaningless, or for this function not to exist, the denominator has to be equal to zero. You have a calculator there. You can try pressing one divided by zero. If you have some calculators, they will, be, they will give you math error. And some, which are more, more, more somehow programmed, they will give you something like this. Some will give you math error. Most of the calculators at this level, they will give us math error. But still, some of us, we have calculators which are more, more programmed and more scientific. They will give us infinity. Now, we'll be seeing about infinity sometime to come as we, we, we keep on with mathematics. Infinity means something that is very big. Uh, you know, this is a very big value. It continues. You have positive infinity. You have negative infinity. But what we're saying, that what you need to know at this level is that if a function, like though you are getting math error on your college when you press 1 out of 0, because still most of us, we have been pressing this, and we are getting the answer is 0. But the answer will not be 0. We have been doing those numbers, maybe in our, in our, in our workings are out, and we have, we have been getting a zero. Or it's only when you have zero out of one that you get zero. But uh, one, zero out of anything. But if you get another number, if, I, if it's 100, whatever you get, even if I put here 100, it doesn't change. Some people even get 100 as the answer. But that's not right. So when you get this, I said you get, you get my failure. It does not exist. It gives us infinity. So what you do is that in this number like this, like when you are placed on the calculator and they are giving you that it is a math error when you divide by zero, just come and get this and equate it to zero. So for this function to be meaningless, the limit has to be equal to zero. So we just get x squared minus, minus 25, then we equate it to zero. So I said that for the function to be meaningless, x squared, to be meaningless, x squared minus 25 will be equal to Zero. So I'll be having that. So for this function to be meaningless, x squared minus 25 will be equal to zero. Now we are going to solve this equation here. See, it is a quadratic equation, so we have to get two answers. The, the fact that we are having x squared. So you have very many ways of doing this. You can take the 25 the other side, you get a square root of 25, which will be positive or negative 5. Also, even if you factorize all this by saying 25 is the same as 5 squared. You can use the difference of 2 squares. See, it is very, very fine. So you can use any. You can use the difference of 2 squares by saying this is, this is 5 squared. You make it x minus 5 into x plus 5. It is fine. All I see what I can say is this for us to see is this. x will be equal to 25. Now for me to get the value of x, I get a square root on both sides here. So my x becomes positive or negative. Five. So the values of x here, we have x equals to positive 5 or x equals to negative 5. And still, so when you go back and check on our answers, that's what we have. So that here we are making it somehow easier for us that we, we have the answers there. Most of you are telling me that, teacher, you can also give us the answers. And as we try to work out, we compare the answers with what you have given us as answers there. So that's how we do that. So please, whenever you find a question saying, find when a function is meaningless, when a function is not, does not exist, when a function is invalid, when a function is not valid, that's what you have to do. Get the denominator, equate it to zero, as simple as that. Don't do some very many things, get, trying to get the infinite and so on. Don't, don't do that. Just get the denominator, equate it to zero. That is enough. You solve the equation that you have obtained. Now, we are going to try to introduce, and now we'll go to the composite function. 
This is the remaining bit of our functions. We are going to go to the composite functions. Now, composite function, what we, what we look at here, we have been looking at these are somehow simple functions. But composite functions, what we do, we combine two functions. For example, I can have f of x, and I can also have g of x. I can have these two. I can have f of x, also I have g of x. can be equal to something, whatever they have given me. Now, a composite function can be given like this. I can have f of g x. Sometimes they can give me this. If you've ever seen something like this, still it means the same thing. So this is f of g. We pronounce, pronounce it as f of g x. So now this, these ones are composite functions. So we can have this one, f of and g of x can also be written as this. When you find this one, even sometimes you can put here an x, still it is fine. So it's the same thing. When you find this, all this, it is the same. Then we are going to see how we, we work out this. Again, what you have to understand here is that when you're having f of g x, another person is having g of, of f of x, these two are not the same. So we are saying f of g x is not equal to g f of x. They are not the same. The two of them are different. So I'm going to tell some numbers. You'll be seeing it. They're not the same. So if, if, if g, in this case, we have, we, have, we have the domain and the range. So this, this g of x here, it is our domain. And f of x is the range. But when you come to this one here, f of x is the, is the domain and g of x is the range. So they're actually different. Some of us have a tendency of making them to be the same, but they are not the same. We are saying these are now composite functions. And this is our last something that we have to look at when you are covering the functions. So we are going to see how we get the composite. Since we have gone through our solving the equations, dealing with the unknowns, uh, handling the inverse, let us look at the last bit, which is getting the composite, dealing with the composite functions. So like we have our number there. I, I organize that I can start with something that can introduce you to see as composite functions. Let us look at the number 11. This is just introducing us. Because some of us have a tendency of fading out on the composite. Yet we can, you find that part B is having a composite. Then you find some students they are doing only part A, which never the composite, so they are leaving this composite function or composite functions. It is a very easy concept also. We are looking at number 11. They are telling us that f of x equals to x squared minus 1. Also, they are asking us to find the expression of f of y. So I've organized these questions that they can never pass. They are going to help us to deal with the composite functions. So we have Roman number asking us to find the expressions of f of y. Roman number asking us to find the expression of x minus 2. And again, Roman number 3, the expression of f of x cubed plus 4. So I've organized these numbers in this way. They are going to help us. Even the answers, they have already given you the answers are there. So that our team here, we have worked harder to say that we can generate even the answers that you, you try to do. If you, we have to leave some numbers behind. You try them, and even as you have the answers, you can say that your answer is OK or not. Now, let us look at this. We are given f of x equals to x squared minus 1. And first, they're telling us to find f of y. So when you ask you to find f of y, what you do is that now x is given as y. We have been having x. Now we are having a y. So see what you do, you go back in this function, f of x, you go back into it. Where you have been having x, you also you put the y there. That will be the expression of f of y. And sometimes when you find the numbers, they're putting f of 1, f of 2. So you just pass that. But when now you tell them to do a composite, then they, they, it looks to be something that's very hard. But it is the same concept. It's all about substitution. So let us look at the expression of f of y. We're just going to come here in f of x. Where we have been having f of x as x squared minus 1. Now, just going to put, finding f of y, I'll come here. Where we have been having now, since I'm finding f of y, where we have the y, where we have the x, I'll put the, the y. So I'll be having my f of y as y squared minus 1. That's an expression for f of y. I'm saying this one is just helping us. You are doing it, it's going to help us as we deal with the composite functions. Now again, we have expression number two. They're saying f of x minus 
2. This is number number one, that's the answer. Number number two saying f of x minus 2. f of x minus 2. Now, still f of x minus 2, we are going to go back in f of x, which was x squared minus 1. Now, look at this. This is where some of us, we end up mess messing up on this number. And, and, I, and, I, and I don't want you to fail a number like this. So what we do is that we have x, x minus 2 here. Previously, we have been having x, f of x. You have seen f of y. We just make substitutions. Now, still so consider this one, x minus 2, to be la now like our x. x minus 2 now is like our x. So see so what you do, you go back in this function of f of x, where you have been having x, remove it. Now put there x minus 2. That's what you're going to put, that's what you're going to do. Go in the function of f of x, where you have been having x, remove the x, put there now, the whole of this is our x. And whatever has been affecting x also is going to affect x here. Our x now is x minus 2. Uh, but our x previously has been squared. Also, I'm going to square the x minus 2. So I go back in this function. Where we are we're having the x squared, I'm going to remove it. So I'm going to put there x minus 2. So I'll be having x, f of x minus 2. This will be equal to x minus 2 squared minus 1. That's our expression for f of x minus 2. So please note how that, that what we have here now, the whole of it becomes the x. The whole, consider it as the whole entity to represent x. That's where most of us mess up from and end up missing marks here. Now, again, they're asking us to find, Roman Murphy is asking us to find f of x cubed plus 4. The same thing is going to happen. So still we can expand this. Like in the answers there, I've expanded for you. You can also expand. There's no problem. Now, again, we are, we are seeing Roman Murphy are telling us to find f of x cubed they're saying us to find f of x cubed plus 4. Now, see, in this case, we are going to look at this, that f of x cubed, x cubed plus 4 is going to be the same as our x. You go back in f of x here, where we have been having the x, so we remove it, we put there x cubed plus 4. So if you understand this concept, that's why I said with this, that composite functions are going to be very easy for us to, do, to deal with. If you understand just the concept of substitution, not only put for x, but put the whole entity, put the whole thing that you have been given it to here, put it in the, in the, in the place where you have been having the x. So f of x cubed plus 4 is going to be the same thing as having still x cubed, plus 4 squared, since my x was squared, also I'll square, now this is my x, also I'll square this, I'll say minus 1. If you have been having any number, maybe multiplying, if there's a 3 here, there's a 4, also put a 4. So understanding this, the composites are going to be very, very easy, because it's all about substitution. So we have other numbers about composite functions, and when we meet next time, our time is up now, but when we meet, we just do one or two numbers, then we'll be doing a, another, another topic. And I encourage you, the number they're going to give you for WhatsApp, even on the fe Facebook, you have been communicating with some of you. Send the topic that you want us to do next after finishing the, the functions. Because only something very small, doing for you some two, one example, three, then you, you can do the other questions. So I thank you very much. And I encourage you to keep on watching BBS as they bring us everything in our sitting room. Toyanza nyo, toyanze ge, ate okubala oku noko uruwalero. Kakasa nti abaizi, abanyumiru okubala, nama abata kuwa gala, nemi chumanyinti okubala oku, tukweta gisate masomo omanji. Uh, Jebuja maase, uja kwe sengano kasi singa na somo okubala, sikazi na namba na isoma, obori yao wali wade o yambi wanyo. Na ye, abana faba sinia fo, nama abali musinia firi, abade mukilasi, tuwe wazo kubanti mbade mungobede la burunji. Bana fe, Aba Green New Schools, mwabali kubanti namba mteka musente. Uh, Yagalo umana wa kubeda nga suma primary, musumere ina standard enunji, ate mutuale, masumere ago. Bali ya buwate, ne wano echivuli, oja kubango umana wa ate, umwade somo edunji. Bana fe, ya bali mbitundu, uh, vili mvuleme zao, esumere odili yao, ili ya janani schools. E janani, baina primary, ne nasale, ate ngeri mchifochi gazo burunji, umana wa joku funida, uh, kusoma kwenyini, kujude burunji, nemo environment enunji. Secondary, Maryland High School, a bad one on TV.
e ntebe liyu kunyanja awonno ojo kutwalo mwana wo atana ye aberenga afuna mu echamanyi mwana wa aberenga amanya katonda mwana wa aberenga ina edini atera mu ngeri yemunga wampisa ate ne bya academics nabyo abikwasaganye bulunji awonno ku university agende nkumba okola diploma ye oba degree oba masters atenga mu ngeri yemune pen yo ino kubanga okolesa ye pen ye ya big a uh, tuli muki ntukuvu ulale uh, rakuna uh, rakuna utukuvu ate tugenda kuba ne good friday runaku orange ate rane kunako omukaga e eh, misa zonna ezigenda kubanga isabwa munte katekeyo tujja kuba ono tuzukulaga botedev kutele fine yafe era tozwa tugenda kumula botuda botedev tujja kana maso ne program yafe uh, ndala zonna ezigenda maso jukira okusoma na koje kule runako ralero kusawa mwenda wabula ku lock 5 okusoma kujja kutandika kusawa 10 Tofa kutelefaini yafe, ayikatonda kuma masumoji.